Hey guys, what's going on? Paul here. Welcome back to another Cardano video. So in this one, we'll take a look at the LenFi testnet, which went live last week. This is V2 of the protocol live on testnet now. V1 is live on mainnet, which is peer-to-peer -peer lending and borrowing built on Cardano. I sat down with Mantis, one of the founders, about two weeks ago. I'll leave that interview below if you haven't heard of the protocol before. So I figured rather than me doing out some notes and sending them back with my feedback on the protocol, we'll step through it here, show what's good, what things I think could be improved, and some suggestions that I have that I think would really make the UI smoother for the end user. If you like this idea of stepping through like this and doing reviews on different protocols on testnet, let me know below, subscribe if you're new, give the video a like, I do appreciate it. Let's jump into it. Okay, so this is the post they put out to announce that the testnet is now live. And they do say that, look, it is live and there are some known bugs and issues in it. And that's what testnets are for. Putting it out on testnet to find the different issues that are there or find potential improvements that could be there. When developers build something, they know how it should work. They test it like the way it should work. But when you put it out to the public, they're going to use things a lot different. They're going to click buttons in different orders. They're going to essentially break it and you need to figure all that out before you go to mainnet. So that's what testnets are generally for. And they've mentioned here some of the things that they are aware of already. There is also a document that shows some of the issues that are there, some of the bugs that have already been found and that they are working on. Probably a few more in Discord. So if you're getting participating in this actively, then make sure you check out Discord and this document here. So let's jump into the protocol and take a look what it looks like. So you can see here, this is the initial page testnet. So this is just to show you what you need to do if you want to get involved and test. It is out on the pre-production testnet. So you need to set up a pre-production wallet. You can do that in any of the wallets just by changing the network. There's a faucet there to request ADA. And this button here will go and create a transaction to send you some of the testnet tokens. And you just have to sign the transaction and then it's time to jump into it. So market, this is what it looks like overall. So there's a few differences to this one compared to other lending and borrowing protocols. Some people might be familiar with the likes of Aave over on Ethereum and over on other networks where on the left you will have all of the assets that you can supply to the protocol and on the right are the assets that you can borrow. And if you've seen the interview with Mantis, he talked about that with theirs, it's going to be one to one. So there will be a pool for each individual asset pair where something like Aave or even on Liquid is very similar to how Aave works. You can provide collateral in ADA and then there could be multiple different tokens that you or assets that you could borrow on the other side and you don't have to put it into the individual pools. But we'll walk through that in a minute. So over on Aave, what you have when you come into this is you have all the different pools. So very similar to what you have on a DEX where you have all the individual pools. This one is ADA ADA. You wouldn't really use this one in reality, but it's only on testnet, so it's looking to see how it works. Ada Jed, Ada Min, over here, the available supply. So what's there that you could actually borrow? This is the supply APR. So if you provided the supply token, which is Ada in this case, you would earn this APR. And then the borrow rate. So this is what it costs you to actually borrow out whatever the other token is in that pair and these will be dynamic this is based on supply and demand so the more that's there in supply then the cheaper it's going to be to borrow it out the less supply then it's going to be more expensive for you in terms of interest to borrow it out and you can see lots of different pairs here so what you will notice is the list is starting to get fairly long there and there is only about four or five assets added to this so far you do have your different filters so you can come in go high to low the available supply collateral token supply APR, borrow APR. And then over here, you can see that most liquid pool per pair, you've pools that you've deposited personally into and pools that you have a loan with. So with this, so someone has already created the pool for A to Z, <clears throat> but I could also come in and create the pool for A to Z. I could just come in and create a new pool and create it for that asset pair too. And it's going to be down to the UI to show what is the most liquid pool and which one is suggested to the users to get involved in it. So it's going to be interesting to see how that dynamic works. There is an incentive to get in there first and create the pool and have the one that is the one that actually 
used the most because whoever creates the pool will have the right to decide where the ADA in that pool gets delegated. If you come in to create pool here, you can see, say I created one for Lenny and it asked me how much I'm going to supply initially. I will put that in collateral token then, which is the one on the other side. So if it's ADA, now this here, they have said that this isn't live on testnet just yet, but this is where you would be able to decide which stake pool that this liquidity pool gets delegated to. So that means that any ADA within this pool gets delegated to the pool of your choice. And as far as I know, there will be an NFT that gives you control of this and you should be able to change that over time, which is a really nice feature to have. And as I say, incentive to have the pool that is used the most here. So that's the overall. If we look at transactions, so you can see I done a few on this last week just to see how it all worked. Deposited, created a pool for Lenny and Jed, if I look at this here, I can see when it was created, the pool manager NFT. And if I come down actually to, so I borrowed here, all of these just show the actual, the times and the NFT that was borrowed and created because with LenFi, what you will be able to do is trade your NFT bond. So the NFT that represents my loans, I could sell that off or I could go and I could buy them on a market. And in the future, there might be a, fairly active marketplace for that as we get other services built on top of this and there is more incentives to do that. But if I come into loans then, I can see the ones that I have loans on. So I can see that I have a debt here of 12 ADA. So I took out a loan for 12 ADA. I already owe 0.01 ADA and in interest. This is when it started. And the collateral that I put up for this one was 600 min. So I can see the health factor is still really good once it's over one or maybe 1.1 so once you're over 100 percent you're okay on that side there's the aprs and the same for lenfi whatever interest is due and i can repay that at any time okay just adding this bit in after because i forgot to put it in at this point in the video was that so this one here shows the loans so everything you borrowed from the platform and you get all of your details here but i would like to see one or two more tabs added into this point as well so maybe one for pools that I've actually created so I could come in and I could look at the pools so a little tab here and then I could see whatever pools that I've created and the details on them and the other one then is for when I've supplied assets to some of the pools that I can come in here and look at my supply so I click in that and then I get something similar to this where I get what collateral I've provided, the interest that I've earned, maybe the start date, the APRs and then the option to actually withdraw it or whatever options that I have at that point. I know I could come over here to pools and I could go into this one and look at pools with my deposit. But if you can make it one click up here when there is all of this space, I think it would be a nice to have. Not critical to the protocol working, but I think simple things like that really enhance the user experience and ease of use. So one thing now when I come over here, so one feature that I think could be really good here is like if you go over to a DEX, so let's look at liquidity pools on a DEX. When I come in here, I look at the pools, I can see all the different information. I can see the TVL and the LP and everything like that. And I have all the different pools here. So just like it is over on LenFi, I could come in and look, let's say for a min pool, but I still get a lot of different assets here. And to me, there's a simpler way to do this. And DEXs already kind of do that. If you go to trade on a DEX, so ignore the chart, we don't need the chart in this case, but I think a feature like this, a dashboard for LenFi could be very good. If you come into it and you don't need market or limit orders, they don't really count. But say the top heading here is asset I want to borrow. So I select the asset that I want to borrow. Since LenFi is there, we'll put that in. I would then put in 100 LenFi that I want to borrow. Then down the bottom here, it will be asset to use as collateral. So then the, I suppose the UI would look in the back end, look through all of the pools and see what pools, what assets that I could use for collateral. So if I want to borrow LenFi, then what pools are there and what options do I have to provide collateral there? So then it would give me the list. I then pick the one that, so let's say ADA, I want to use ADA as collateral. It will come up then and I put in how much collateral I want to give. And then it would tell me obviously the health score, the health factor, what it would be. And then I can do my loan at that stage or supply liquidity or whatever you want to do. But I think a simpler UI sitting on top of this would do very well because as more tokens comes into this, 
it's going to get a lot busier. Now, if you want to do a loan right now, what you do is you go down through it, you look to see which one you want to supply liquidity to. So say I wanted to supply to LenFi, click on supply, and then I go in and put in however much I want to supply. So let's say, I think I have LenFi in this wallet, click on next. So I want to supply this. This is the LP token that I will receive batch or fee deposit then you would just click on confirm and that would confirm the transaction for you because off gets batched and then that's it done so the same then on the other side if you want to borrow just click on borrow so how much do i want to borrow so i want to borrow 10 lenfi then i have to put in how much um, collateral i want to put in one thing i would like to see here is see the way it says here the max so that's taking the max that i could borrow but i would like it to read my wallet and show me how much is actually in my wallet so have like it's got max there have max here to show me how much is sitting in my wallet because initially i was getting an error that it was coming up with something about the utxos wasn't the utxos already spent i can't remember i was getting an, an error telling me that i couldn't do it and when i went looking in the wallet i didn't actually have enough of test tokens in the wallet because they're test tokens i hadn't been paying attention to the amount that's in there normally you would have a fair idea of what's in your wallet but i think this could help is just having here that say i have 1000 tokens in my wallet that then i could put in here say i went to put in 1000 or 11000 that it would tell me here that you don't have that many tokens in your wallet rather than going to the next step so it was letting me go to the next step and then it was giving me a random error rather than if you can catch it at this point it makes it a lot easier so you can see the pricing isn't right just yet but that's one of the things they have said isn't just live on the test net yet something like that i think um could do very well so you see if i put in 1500 ada for this one then my health factor is 1.15 it would still be a little bit low if i was actually doing this loan on the mainnet i'd be very cautious at doing something like that you can see there it says the oracle price is not updated that's no problem that's just one of the features that hasn't been turned on on the test net yet so at this point it will be next it tells you what you're doing so you're borrowing one land file. this is the collateral you're putting up batcher and deposit and then you would just confirm once you do you would then see it appearing here like i have these low ones already done hope this has given you a quick insight into what the lenfi testnet looks like a lot of good work has gone in here a few things that i've went through there that i think could help improve the overall ui but looking forward to seeing where this one progresses and getting to the stage of pool lending for lenfi being ready to go live on the mainnet if you got value, please do share this out. Let me know your thoughts below on this type of a structure on a video going forward of me going through test sets like this, giving feedback, kind of doing a bit of both, walking through how it works, but also giving feedback as I go. Talk to you soon, guys, and uh, don't forget to like.